All right, buddy, welcome to the show. Uh, we are packed wall to wall today. So we have Donald Trump's first rally of the 2024 campaign season in Waco. Gee, I wonder if there's some symbolism in uh, his decision to choose Waco, Texas. What else happened at Waco? Uh, anyway, we'll get to that. We have um, Bill Maher roasting Ron DeSantis, and Trump enjoyed that so much that he posted that on his Truth Social account. So an interesting crossover episode to get to. And then later on, we have the glorious fake John Fetterman conspiracy theory. I mean, I I don't know exactly where they're going with this. Do they think he died and this is a body double? Do they think he's still in the hospital because of depression and this is a body double? Do they think he had like the face-off transplant procedure? Remember that movie, Face Off? So anyway, we'll get to all that and much, much more. So let's go ahead and dive into it here. So um, Donald Trump launched his 2024 presidential campaign with his first rally of the season here. And it is in Waco, Texas. Now, Waco, Texas is a very famous place, and the reason is there was a giant um, cult, the Branch Davidians, that popped up there in the 1990s. You had this guy, David Koresh, who basically said, like, he's the Messiah. He would um, rape the kids of the people who were his followers, and it was not a good situation. They were also involved in uh, dealing arms. Now, they were uh, questionable, to say the least, It was bad what was going on there. But then, of course, the federal government got involved, the ATF. They wanted to do this this bust of the Branch Davidians and, and, you know, get on the front page of all the newspapers and have a career-making move. And um, in the process, they ended up basically massacring everybody at the Branch Davidian compound. Um, It's sort of like a go-to example of federal government overreach, um, you know— We certainly didn't have to kill children in order to save children, which is kind of the argument that they go with. uh, Like, hey, what are we going to do? There was there had already been a shootout when they first showed up on the scene and it was like a month or two standoff. And um, eventually there was a total disaster there. Now, this fueled the rise of anti-government extremism in the 1990s. Um, It was really the original case which helped spark this, these far right, many far right movements. And so it's interesting that Trump picks this place of all places to do his first rally. Now, I mean, it's classic Donald Trump, right? It, he spent a lot of time going after Ron DeSantis, as you would imagine. And um, he did the classic, you know, he showed up at my doorstep. He came to my office with tears in his eyes saying, sir, sir, I'm going to need your help, sir. He had, he was doing terribly in the polls. He had basically nothing. He had no money in the bank, no money at all. And then I endorsed him and he took off like a rocket ship. He did his classic Trump uh, tap dance on that. So we're going to get in a little bit. We'll get to the video of the audience reaction when he's going after DeSantis. Mm, interesting. Uh, but first, let's start with some other clips. So let's dive into it. Even pick up a tiny piece of that story. Can you believe it? You look at the mainstream media. They don't. They don't talk about it. They're right there. In fact, it was a very big. They don't talk about it. Amazing. You know, it's amazing because when I started, they had a very, very high popularity and approval rating, and now they're lower than Congress. Lower than. I'm very proud of that. I've. I've exposed, but they were never like this. Now they're deranged. They're, and not all of them. I'd say 10% of them are okay, right? But the 10% has, have a very hard time. They have a very hard time. And So just quick comment on this. So he's going after the media. You have fake news media. They're terrible. Maybe 10% of them are good, but they're terrible. They're horrible. Like, the problem here is that's a criticism that is actually on its face accurate. Mainstream media does suck. But his solution is to create a bigger problem because he just wants a media that's completely sycophantic to him. Like, that's his perspective. It's like, the media should praise me 24-7 and vanquish my enemies 24-7. And so he would prefer, if all of the media was like One America News or Newsmax, who are the most deranged of all the media outlets, he would love that. So it's funny because this is one of those criticisms where like, You know, even a lefty could listen to it and go, oh, he's right. Mainstream media sucks. Mainstream media is terrible. But you need to understand the devil is in the details. And the ways that he would go about, quote unquote, fixing the media would actually make the media significantly worse than it is right now. Nobody can understand why a media would be against things where we want good education for our children, where we want 
uh, where we want real, strong military, where we want low taxes and low regulations and good schools and good all. It's, it's I love that. The media is against good schools. They're against low taxes and low regulation. They're against the good education system. All those things are so loaded. By the way, he tried to reform the education system. And what was his idea? Quote, unquote, patriotic education. You want to take a stab in the dark what that's like? It's totally lying to people and propagandizing people about our history. They want to bury all the things that are objectively negative and pump up all the things that they think are good. And by the way, in their per- from their perspective, Ronald Reagan was a savior and he was the hero and he was objectively the best president. And that, of course, is demonstrably untrue if you have any reasonable standards. But this is what he means. And he's bragging about low regulations. He's talking about why doesn't the media you know, want low regulations? Well, I mean, we just saw a train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, which was brought about because of uh, lack of regulation. We just saw a bank failure, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank, because Trump repealed the regulations in 2018 that could have prevented that. So it's amazing to me the way that he he talks about this stuff. It's like, it's just, everything is so loaded. His terminology is so loaded. And it's, he has never once in his life straw manned an opposing position. It's a crazy thing that they're fighting against. And uh, for some reason, the radical left, I don't even think they know what they're doing. I think they're probably, they have so much hatred for our side. They don't want to listen to the issues. They don't want to listen to the policy. But it's a very- I love that. Like the idea that, you know, I would, I'm opposed to Trump, but I would be for Trump if I just looked at his policies. It's like, that's the main reason I'm against you, bro. Like I actually enjoy- his unhinged behavior on Twitter. I think he's hilarious. I think his rallies are phenomenal entertainment. The main reason I'm against you is because of your policies and how terrible they were. It's it's hilarious. He flips it on his head like, nobody could be against me because of my policies. Nobody could be against me because of that. Really, you increased drone strikes by 400%. You signed a pro-torture executive order. You assassinated a top Iranian commander who was on the ground fighting ISIS. People can't oppose you because of your policies? Are you kidding me? You guys tried to coup Venezuela and you pretended that a guy who wasn't elected president was president, Juan Guaido. I mean, I can go on and on here. One of my uh, facts I always go back to is look at what he did with the predatory payday loan industry. He made it so that the regulations which were supposed to go into effect against that predatory industry were slapped down and the lawsuits that were against them were dismissed. Destroyed the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which was a great agency, one of the best government agencies, which had returned $12 billion to defrauded Americans. And he's acting like you can't oppose him because of policy. Absurd. Anyway, let's continue. The last four or five, actually the last month. Last month. Yeah. And put the other ones up. You'll see some numbers that are incredible. You'll see some numbers that are, we just had one today. 69? For Trump, Trump, and I think 18 or 19 for the sanctimonious. Okay. He's citing here a poll from CatTurd2 on Twitter. It is the least scientific poll that has ever been conducted in human history. CatTurd2? And he posted it. He didn't even make an effort to hide the fact that it was a poll done by CatTurd2 on Twitter. Is it CatTurd2? Is 2 the number at the end of it? I don't even know. This is like right wing, far right, uh, you know, Twitter figure who Elon Musk sucks up to 24 seven. I don't know why these guys are in love with this cat turd guy as if like I go for all my serious political thoughts. I go to cat turd too on Twitter. He's citing that as if it's like a scientific poll. Now, by the way, he doesn't even need to do that. There's some actual polls where he's at like 51 or 52 percent, which is crushing everybody else in the field, including DeSantis. So why would you go to cat turd too to undermine your case? <laughs> this guy is something else, man. Yeah, we were at 69 and one today. But, but if, if I, I never fought, fought the Marxists Marxist and the lobbyists and the rhinos and the, rhinos and the, the open border zealots, if I, I never, never fixed, fixed our, our military, military and I rebuilt our entire military, we defeated ISIS. We took out al Baghdadi. We took out Soleimani. We f- He's bragging about killing the Iranian commander. How can you brag about? He was fighting ISIS on the ground, and that nearly sparked World War III. And there were shots back and forth between the uh, pro-Iranian Shia militias and U.S. troops at the time. This is not something to brag about. Our military and gave you the largest tax cut in the history of our country. We gave you the largest... 
83% of the benefits of that tax cut went to the top 1% in the long term. That's a fact. That's not an opinion. That bill incentivized outsourcing of American jobs. This is something he pretended to be against. But then when push came to shove, his policies facilitated that. God, it's amazing. Oh my God, it's so crazy. Regulation, regulation cuts, cuts in the history, history of our country. country. That's, That's why, why our businesses, businesses were doing so well. Not now, unfortunately. <laughs> Again, the deregulation led directly to the Silicon Valley bank crash. The deregulation led directly to the train derailment in East Palestine. Ugh, he's bragging about his biggest failures. It's unbelievable. And by the way, nobody's even going to call him on it. The media is not going to do, do a good job fact-checking him on it. The Democrats are not going to call out this specific part of his speech. And, and none, none of, of this persecution, persecution would have ever happened. happened. In other words, if, if I, I didn't, didn't do all that, that, I was leading this life. I didn't know what, what subpoena, subpoena meant. meant. Now I'm, I'm one, one of the kings. kings. I, know I, exactly. I can look at the color. color. I can tell you where that one came from. Oh, that's a nice... No. Occam's razor is that you've actually committed a lot of crimes, which is why you keep getting subpoenaed. Anyway, let's continue. The Oval Office, shortly, shortly after, after I win, I win the, presidency, the presidency, I will have, have the disastrous war between, between Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine settled. settled. It, would it would never, never have happened. happened. I used to talk to Putin. I got along well with Putin. I used to talk to Putin about it. It's something he certainly had in his mind. Never even talked about it. For four years, you didn't even hear about it. As soon as I was out or left or however you want to describe that catastrophe, they started putting soldiers on the border. But even then, he didn't want to do it. He wanted to get a peace. Now it looks like you'll end up probably getting the whole thing. But I've never seen anything like it. What's happened? And if you saw the other day with President Xi, smart, top of his game. President Putin, smart. Very smart people. Standing there talking about the world order for the next 100 years. That's one of the saddest things you can imagine. One of the saddest. I'm proud, I'm proud to be the, the only, only president, president in decades, decades who did not start, start a new war. war. Everyone said, oh, he's going to start. He's going to start a new war. That is, it's so immensely misleading. Uh, he kept us in Iraq. He kept us in Afghanistan. We actually did go into Syria under him more aggressively, and he admitted we're occupying a third of the country so we can steal their oil. They tried to do a coup in Venezuela as well. He increased the drone war by 400%. So this, this brag here, pff, I didn't start any new wars. It's, it's so immensely misleading because we already had, you know how we always I rebuilt the military, it was phenomenal. You just saw him say that. We already had 900 military bases before he came into office. He didn't roll those military bases back. He kept it exactly like it was. I had to rebuild our military. It was only bigger than the next 10 largest countries combined already. It was already gigantic. We are the world's sole superpower. We are an imperialist behemoth. And he acts like he was this dove the entire time. Nothing could be further from the truth. What, do you want brownie points because you didn't start World War III or topple the Iranian government or the North Korean government? Is that what you want? And it's, and it's no, no coincidence, coincidence that the deep, deep state, state is coming after me even harder since I pledged to swiftly end the war in Ukraine. So when I say end it, I'm going to get a settlement very quickly. And I know both people, I'm, and you can get it very, very quickly. You can only do it through the presidency, but you control the money coming in, coming out. You can get that. I will have that settlement done within 24 hours. I love that. Now, look, I agree with finding some sort of negotiated settlement because the alternative is terrifying continued escalation with two nuclear armed superpowers like so i agree with that but he's not the idea he's going to get a deal in 24 hours is preposterous everybody knows that that's not true everybody knows that's not true and by the way in a different part of the speech he brags about how tough i was on russia i was so tough on russia you have no idea i built up i did a nato build up on their borders i killed their pipeline there was supposed to be a deal with exxon mobil i made sure we armed Ukraine, we gave Ukraine, and by the way, under him, there was a scandal because a lot of those arms were flowing to uh, the Nazis that are in Ukraine. And I remember there was a scandal at the time, and Congress cut off the weapons because they were tracked and they were going to Nazis, and then uh, eventually they re-upped that and started sending arms there, and I, I don't know what sort of tracking mechanisms are on it currently because they're, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the weapons are still going to the unsavory factions of Ukraine, but... This is something he did. So uh, 
out of one side of his mouth, he talks about how I'm so tough on Russia. I'm the toughest president you've ever seen on Russia. And then out of the other side of his mouth, he's like, I'll get a deal in 24 hours. I'll be able to make a deal because I can. I'm even handed. I'll t- take care of both sides. This is exactly what happened with Israel and Palestine, by the way. He did the exact same thing where he acted like, I'm going to get a deal. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to make sure everybody comes to the table and we'll get that done. We'll get that taken care of. And then, of course, what happened? He was massively, massively biased in favor of Israel. And, you know, they he moved the embassy to Jerusalem, which sparked an international crisis and led to bodies in the streets and all sorts of problems bubbled up as a result of that. And so this, I'm going to, I'm going to get it done in 24 hours. It's one of those things where, like, it's good politics that he's saying this, but we all know there's no there there. Anyway, now let's get to the main event here, which is the crowd's reaction when Trump goes after Ron DeSantis. This is kind of interesting, man, and perhaps it's not the reaction he would have hoped for. Then he a guy, so he gets the nomination because of you. He wins the election because of you. Two years later, the fake news is up there saying, will you run against the president? Will you run? And he says, I have no comment. They say, that's not supposed to happen. I have no comment. No. So I'm not, I'm not a big fan, but I love, I love, that's right, he's a disciple of Paul Ryan. He is actually a disciple. That's why he wanted to cut Social Security and Medicare. But I think we're doing really well. I mean, we're up at levels. I don't know if they have them on the screen, but they might put them up on the screen. The polls, the last four or five, actually the last month. And put the other ones up. You'll see some numbers that are incredible. You'll see some numbers that we just had one today. 69. For Trump, and I think 18 or 19 for the St. Demonius. Yeah, we were at 69 and one tonight. But if I never fought the Marxist, then the- So... As far as that portion goes, that was one of the flatter parts of the speeches, man. When he's going after DeSantis. It's interesting. It's an interesting dynamic. Crystal and I were talking about this the other night. It looks to me like DeSantis is doing what Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, and Ted Cruz tried to do in 2016, which is like, everybody assumed Trump is going to fizzle out, so he's not going to be a factor come the end. And so you just need to be the last person standing. And... Those guys did it in a way, honestly, that was kind of embarrassing. They were bad at it. And um, even though Ted Cruz was the last man standing, it wasn't enough, right? Now, DeSantis, I think, is doing a better job at that than any of those ghouls did. But ultimately, it's, it still looks like it's not going to be enough because with the uh, prosecution happening, I think that that circles the wagons and gets the right wing base to fall in line and say, the people we don't like are going after the guy we like. So now we're going to support the guy we like even more. So the way the national scene is unfolding is such that it it doesn't bode well for DeSantis. But having said that, he is doing better. It's almost like no matter how much Trump goes after him, He's not imploding to nothingness. He's not imploding to zero or 10%. He's still, even in the worst polls, he's at 20%, right? So there's plenty of people who like Trump who are going to vote for Trump who are still like, I still kind of like like DeSantis, right? They view him as like the future of the party. So it's interesting because Trump's been unleashing with everything he's got on DeSantis. DeSantis is still hanging in there. But having said that, it looks as of right now, like Trump is a back to being a colossal favorite. But... It is funny that at his rallies, even going after DeSantis, it falls kind of flat, right? Like, it's not the same sort of... I feel like if you go back and look at... And maybe we'll do this one day. You go back and look at his rallies when he's going after all the other Republicans, Little Marco, Low Energy Jeb, right? That Those are like some of the biggest lines of the night in the rally. And the DeSantis attack was one of the flatter parts of it. Again, that's not to say that Trump is not crushing DeSantis right now in the polls, because he is. But it is to say that It's not landing as much as Trump would hope for it to land. So anyway, we'll see what happens moving forward. But um, classic Trump style rally, Waco, Texas. Uh, He's back out there. He's doing his thing. And um, it'll be interesting to watch it unfold. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.